Remember that video we did a while back of this desolate silver pasture area? This is what it looks like now. Looks wonderful, doesn't it? All right, this area out here was absolutely messed up from the feet up. And specifically what I'm getting at is that the previous owners, before we got this, basically let their cows run everywhere. Now, let me just say, homesteaders can be the best thing in the world or they can be the worst thing in the world. And this was an example of poor management and just being the worst thing in the world. That's kind of what we're gonna get into. Okay, this whole thing was falling in on itself. Most of the trees were dead. William came through, selected in the time that he could and also by himself largely, what needed to come out. So he did it, okay? So in one season, this is what we got back. In one season, but is this what you want? I'm gonna tell you why you don't. Okay, when you have a soil, we tested this stuff. It is almost, and now this is a forest system, or it should be. We should have a high fungal component out here. We looked at this stuff under the microscope, and I'm telling you what, it is destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. There's barely bacteria in it, and certainly none of the predators that want to eat bacteria. So you have no soil food web, as Dr. Ingham, Ingham calls it. So, first thing we did was get rid of all the trees we couldn't use. Okay, so naturally the first thing that's gonna pop up when you do that is gonna be something you don't necessarily want. Now, in this case here, we have what the locals call Chinese silvergrass. This is what you see all throughout here, okay? This is the pioneer species or what a lot of people wanna call weeds. Now, you're thinking, okay, boy, this looks like really something wonderful to eat. No animal, no animal will eat this. Maybe water buffaloes or something like that but certainly nothing that we have in high abundance around here. They will eat it if the, A, they get hungry, and B, if it's really young. This stuff is still like adolescent stage. It'll get plumb up to here. So we got a problem, don't we? Especially when inside this net over here, I got sheep that are working this area. So what do we do about it? If your pioneer species that comes around is not something you want, so what do you do? Let me show you how we're dealing with that. All right, we got a situation where we got some messed up soil and there ain't a whole lot of wonderful life out here and it's certainly grown very little of what any animal would wanna eat. So what's the best dog to bring to this hunt? Hair sheep. They're not gonna eat this or very, very little of it. I mean, very little of it. It's almost for them like eating straw. But there's other things in here that they're getting down and they're eating. So here's what they do. Here's our method. Here's what we're doing. As they go through, we're leaving them like a three-day rotation. We got the boys in here right now. Um, well, I say we got one boy and the other is basically, we castrated him so he may identify as a you right now, but that's something else altogether. So anyway, we got them in here right now. We let them work it for three days, okay? In that three days, they're eating pretty much everything they want. I'm supplementing with a little bit of hay. They'll partake of that. And then of course, we're giving them tons and tons of comfrey every single morning and every single evening. Now, as they do what they're doing, on the last day of that rotation, I throw down some seeds. And then the last day, they're sitting out there doing what sheep do. They're stomping those seeds in. They're doing what they do. And then the next day, when we move them, I come back and I do this over here. See this? Let's, let's take a look over here. So all that silver grass, I mean, that area... This area looked exactly like what you see there. I'm going through with a weed eater. And like I said, whatever the animals, like the great Sepulter says, whatever the animals don't do, you got to do. So you want to employ them as much as you can, but they're not going to eat it. So what is this silver grass? You can see a little bit of it right here where I missed. What is it good for? I remember, I put the seeds down. They stomped them in. Now I got a ready-made mulch layer. And that's exactly what you see for the most part. I went through, chopped down all that silver grass, now it's dried. Now it's gonna be something of a carbon source. And this is the slower or actually the fastest way that I know of to take a messed up soil and transform it into something that is gonna look more like what you see in the distance down there. Not difficult, not hard. It's just taking the right dog to the hunt, number one. Think about what's happening here. Awful place, highly bacterial. And we're gonna change it to way more fungal. We'll take you for the ride on that, just like we said. But remember, when you do this, do not, 
be discouraged because when you take something that was totally more messed up, highly compacted, highly bacterial, your first thing that's going to want to pop up is what nature put out there, what the good Lord put out there to fix human problems. They're not animal problems. It was poor management problems. So the first thing to do that is what? What everybody calls weeds. We call them pioneers because they're the first ones in. They're like a U.S. Army sapper, okay? So they get in there. The weeds are doing their thing. But if we want to speed up that transition, the succession from a bacterial to a fungal thing, there's other things we're going to do here before long. This is probably one of the fastest ways you can do it. Now, what's going to pop up after this? Okay, we're, we're getting on the shady edge of summer. And so right now, we at least have a carbon layer down here. Bacteria is still having its way, but the good Lord has provided everything down in that soil we need. So now it's going to slowly make its transition from a bacterial to maybe a little fungal. And we're going to show you along the way. Like I said, this is like an overview of how we're going to recover this area. So if you have anything, and I mean anything that looked remotely similar. And if you go up here and look, y'all, there's still a fair piece. We got trees kicking sideways. All of that happened as a matter of poor management. We are going to do this all the way up the side of the mountain. And what we're going to see, I already know because we've already done it throughout here. First was the silver grass. And by the way, it only shows up when there's sunlight in there. It was not even in here. It was barely in here. Mostly weeds and thorns and thistles and stuff like this. So these guys think they got the run of the land. And this is why everybody in these mountains is like, oh man, I, I can't do anything with this land. We got silver grass everywhere. Well, guess what? Silver grass likes certain conditions, okay? It loves certain conditions. We're going to lean it out of those conditions and into something it doesn't like. And y'all, this is the way, this is the, the start point on how we do it. So we're going to have our animals do their work. We come behind and do our part. And this is the beginning stages of what that looks like. Does it look beautiful right now? No, but it will, it will. And it's just taking the right dog to the hunt, the right knowledge um, and using the right animals, all those things. We'll walk you through the entire thing. All right, y'all, if you need anything from us, Comfrey, which I think we've provided more than enough videos on the benefits of that. Bone sauce, world's best deer repellent. It's not a panacea, but it's the best you can buy. We got it there. Anything else you need is down below. Don't forget. Check us out on the Permaculture Pimp Cast, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. You can see that in all platforms where they have um, podcasts. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. Right here is it. We'll see you next time.